एवरीवन आई एम जमीर शेख फैकल्टी ऑफ केमिस्ट्री फ्रॉम श्री शिवाजी कॉलेज ऑफ आर्ट्स कॉमर्स एंड साइंस अकोला और कॉलेज इज री एक्रेडिटेड विथ नैक ए प्लस प्लस ग्रेड विथ द सी जी पी एफ और थ्री पॉइंट फाइव एट टूडे आई एम हियर आई एम यूर इंस्ट्रक्टर विल डिस्कस द इंट्रोडक्शन एंड द हैंडलिंग ऑफ द टॉक्सिक मेटल्स फ्रॉ इन द लैबोरेटरी सो दिस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट द इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ आवर केमिस्ट्री सब्जेक्ट यू मस्ट अवेयर अबाउट द एलिमेंट एंड देयर एप्लीकेशन whether they are useful or whether they are or toxic to us by knowing their nature then we can easily deal with that particular element as you know that chemistry is basically originated from your periodic table the various elements are there in the periodic table which are used for mankind but some of the elements they show some adverse effect that is called the toxicity so that must be known to us so today i am here to deal with this introduction and the handling of our toxic metals in the laboratory so department of chemistry shri shivaji college of science amravati organizes a course on the chemical handling and the laboratory safety and i am very much thankful to be here so first of all i am thankful to the principal of a college dr g v corpese the head of the department dr burghate ma'am the course coordinator vankhede ma'am and all the teaching and non teaching staff from the shri shivaji college of science amravati so for inviting me for this session so today i am your instructor for how to deal uh, the toxic metals uh, from the laboratory what precaution should be taken now while handling that particular chemical now what are uh, uh, first we'll discuss about the introductory part of our today's session so you know that uh, the heavy metals are nothing but uh, what that mean are heavy heavy means basically they are have higher density so heavy metals all the metals are basically what occurred in the nature that occurs in the nature they are originated from earth crust they have high atomic weight that is very important now they have high atomic weight so they cannot be degraded easily they have high density also it's uh, greater than uh, minimum five times greater than what the water now so it's very difficult to degrade now and their toxicity is depend upon the dose okay the root of our exposure inhalation uh, via the ingestion the various methods are there via the food etc their chemical species as well as their age also example let's say older age people are there uh, then uh, the young infant uh, infants are there young people are there so on that basis of the age their gender the genetics the nutritional status of that particular exposed individual it depend upon the toxicity so Uh, they cannot be degraded i already told you that high molecular high atomic weight means it cannot be degraded or destroyed easily that's why they are very uh, dangerous to the environment uh, a small extent when they enter into the body uh, basically via the food via the air via the drinking water these are very three most important sources where they enter into the body now okay basically a small amount is entered into a body via the food you know that nowadays the food is a hybrid now you know that hybrid means the lot of uh, agri in the in the field of our agriculture they use a lot of pet pesticides lot of insecticides and all these chemicals are there herbicide is example and these uh, chemicals which are contaminated in that particular plant so and when it come to the market and when it come to our home so we eat that food now okay and that food is contaminated so very little amount of food uh, very little amount of what uh, basically 
the amount of that metals uh, enter into our body via these three purpose three uh, ways now also there are trace uh, some heavy metals are there let's say example copper and selenium they are so essential also okay you know that the role of copper is very important role of selenium is very important now if we if we heard about the bioinorganic chemistry so then you will deal with that how copper is very essential to our body now because it is act as an enzymatic element now okay even also zinc is also uh, uh, worked as an enzymatic catalyst also so a small amount is no problem at all but when it is in high concentration when human body is exposed to high concentration then it can lead to the poisoning so must remember this two point okay then let's uh, next to uh, our that so the main uh, poisoning is due to the food and drinking water the contamin they, they get contaminated okay and then transported into the uh, metabolic system so the heavy heavy metals are generally they are very dangerous because they bioaccumulate what is that bioaccumulate now a bioaccumulation is the basically the process where a chemical uh, species which entered into the biological organ over a time okay that means for a longer time they get they get inserted they get uh, one can say they are present in a biological organ now okay or so basically any chemical compound which is accumulate in the living things at any time that are taken up and stored faster than they are broken down so basically they cannot be excreted they cannot be uh, one can say they cannot be uh, exhaled from the body now so they get they get present they are present for a longer time and that is called as a bio accumulation accumulate means they stay for a longer time and bio means basically for the biological organ so this is a, that's why uh, you must aware about uh, the why metals are toxic and which metals are going to be a toxic in nature okay so today we learn the two sides of our chemistry chemistry is very useful it is a central science we all are the student of science and we always deal with how a science is good we are always exploring okay like i am here to explore my subject i am very much thankful here and you you should also so basically but other side of chemistry you should also know now what toxicity is there now if we know the toxicity then we will deal easily okay neither so anyone can uh, go to the lab and do experiment and all these thing without any precautions so before dealing with any practical before dealing with any lab so you should aware about the some precautions some lab safeties are there now. okay so have what are the heavy metals now heavy metals are basically the metallic system metallic chemical element metallic means they are metal uh, which are present in the elemental form that have relatively high density you know as already told that high density means they are denser okay and they are toxic or poisonous at low concentration okay like copper like selenium like zinc they are not like that at low concentration these elements are very useful essential elements one can call but heavy metals at low concentration they are poisonous always remember okay and here to uh, express which metals are going to called as a heavy metal okay and uh, here this is the flow chart that uh, explain how uh, heavy metals are there now how they classified now so dangerous elements example mercury then cadmium you know that mercury uh, which is a liquid state then cadmium uh, then what arsenic then chromium then thallium and then what the lead so as their uh, elemental symbol is also there now mercury from hydrazinum cadmium cd arsenic from arsa that is as chromium from cr thallium that's T tl and lead that's called the plumbum is called pb okay so uh, i will also show the some images this is what uh, the atomic model of uh, mercury uh, this is uh, the cadmium which is 48 atomic number mass is 112 arsenic 33 uh, chromium 24 is a well known element uh, the 81 that is thallium and lastly what the 82 lead okay these are the heavy metals which are classified in a single slide so safe handling of what acute toxic chemicals now okay what does mean that acute okay and chronic we will discuss what is that acute and chronic okay so here i am i am here to discuss with you now so you guys all are uh, uh, stay with us up to the end now okay so the heavy metals are classified as you know that these are the four very important again mercury cadmium arsenic and uh, uh, again arsenic it's by mistake it's arsenic it should be lead okay 
now can you see this picture now and can you uh, can you think yourself and uh, tell the answer what symbol indicates now your first symbol you, you saw everywhere in a lab in a vehicle vehicles also some vehicles are there now second one is also the very common one and third is also that okay so i will show you what are these three so first one flammable uh, you know that uh, which catches the fire second one is a corrosive third is a reactive example metals okay similarly look at this thing now so if you see this is a poison acute risk cancer etc etc these are also the some symbols of the chemicals example are called as the toxic substances okay then the toxic substances which are all around us now we must know about that and many of you know which are the toxic you know the pollutants the pollutants are also the toxic one that's called the cigarette okay that smoke the automotive exhaust then common chemicals are pesticide fluorescent mercury then asbestos solution bpa there's bisphenol uh, used in some plastic and some natural toxic even biotoxin also there from example snake bite it's a biotoxin okay so look at these three pictures you will easily get uh, some idea what are the pollutants which are present around us now. and many other are there i am just showing these three pictures next to that the main person or the main system which is responsible for the pollution is a man right is a human being so human being is only responsible basically for uh, this pollution okay so scope of this topic we will discuss about how uh, we will take the safety uh, about that highly toxic metals we will see some definitions okay uh, what type of what uh, how we work with the uh, toxic material or toxic elements okay and some case studies let's say some examples some definitions are there you know mutagens mutagens is basically that will causes the destruction of dna okay that will changes the structural function of uh, dna basically and responsible are these are the chemicals which are responsible to break the dna or to that uh, one can call cause the mutation in the dna it's called the mutagen chemicals are responsible smoke is also responsible then carcinogens are basically the cancer causing agent that will causes the cancer okay and again it is a type of a mutation uh, these are the some chemicals which are responsible for the carcinogen tetragen means nothing but the which uh, affects to uh, fetal development okay uh, these are the some chemicals which are responsible for that then reproductive hazards basically that will uh, that will one can say uh, suspect to the reproductive organ and the cell and these are the chemicals which are responsible for this so you must aware about mutagen carcinogen tetragen and and reproductive hazards then this is very important now what is mean by acute toxicity and chronic toxicity so acute and chronic basically these are nothing but it's a type of a toxicity that is it is a it depend upon the level of exposure now say example some person one person is there and he uh, say example uh, uh, alcohol let's say alcohol now so when first a newly prepared uh, one can say uh, when alcohol is drunk by anyone what happen now after after a few second or few time after a few time not a second after a few time it it uh, uh, it show some imbalances it show some nausea etc etc so that is called as acute acute response but chronic is nothing but the a person which drunk daily alcohol what happen now it after some day after some a time that uh, after a month later the liver get damaged that is called as a chronic so acute and chronic so acute exposure basically is an immediate one immediate after the exposure immediate af after the what the exposure that's example burning burning okay burning is an immediate response okay uh, uh, let's say example the snake bite carbon dioxide poisoning any chemical when drop onto the uh, our hand when we are doing experiment etc uh, then chronic exposure is an very dangerous now because it is accumulating in our body and it show some effect after a long time okay and it it might uh, uh, end with the death also okay 
let's say alcohol uh, when acutely is nothing but the nausea unconsciousness imbalance okay while walking and etc while chronic is nothing but the liver diseases so how to determine the toxicity for a known substances now so for that when you go to the lab okay there uh, always on any chemical box so there is an data that is called as a msds that uh, that show all type of what information hazard inf information how to uh, first aid measurements measures the personal personal protection acute and chronic toxicity the targeted organ all kind of what information which are required while handling that particular chemical all are present on that box now so you must go to the msds what is that msds now the msds is particularly material safety data sheet now. okay so uh, based on that look at this msds all many types of what symbols and many types of what uh, signs are there various information is also there just go to the lab and just saw the what kind of what information is present now okay that's uh, that's msds is called as a material safety data sheet so we'll now discuss the first case history of methyl so methyl mercury you know that this mercury basically referred as hg the well known compound of what uh, mercury is dimethyl mercury one of the most poison one of the most toxic substance okay what happened uh, we'll just go to the uh, one case history now what happened with this when exposure to the, the dimethyl mercury you should aware about that okay so in 1997 this incident is happened a 48 year old university professor just imagine a 48 year old university professor right and that incident was happened in 1997 look at this is the professor she is a professor at some university and he wear a latex gloves everybody know about the gloves now okay and uh, he did some pa practical and during that practical he also wear the gloves okay remember this but we whenever we are doing any practical we don't wear that gloves and etc sometimes uh, uh, sometimes there is no shoe also there must be a shoes while handling any practical or while doing any practical now okay don't use slippers and etc okay sandals and slippers there should be a shoes is there there should be a gloves are there apron must condition okay now next uh, that he trans she transferred dimethyl mercury mercury by pipette the same chemical compound which is transferred through the pipette now but what happened to this is the compound now that's called the dimethyl mercury now some drop fell on her glove right that's few drops her glove uh, the few drops are fell on the glove hand she removed immediately and washed the, her hands many times okay that's fine after that she experienced no symptoms for a five month there is no acute symptoms acute means not immediate okay but then she reported neurological neurological problems some neurological problems are nothing but the difficulty in the split neuro nervous system related to the neurons etc etc difficulty in the speaking tingling etc and she was diagnosed with mercury poisoning after five month okay then what happened up to that i already told that whenever there is an chronic exposure is there so that person is lead toward the damage of organ and that will leads to the death in spite of aggressive chelation treatment she died of after 10 months this is the first case history happened in 1997 of dimethyl mercury so dimethyl mercury one of the poisonous and very toxic material so whenever possible don't use that metal now don't use that particular chemical if any substitute is there find some substitute for particularly that dimethyl mercury now so alternative should be there now so there must be a seek alternative and then remember one thing so is there any alternative or why you need this is any really need that particular chemical okay so you must have some uh, information related to the health administration okay so uh, whether that antidote is present or not in case of what emergency okay you must have uh, you must have that kind of what information you must characterize that whether it is an hazard or it is an simple one uh, is any biological or chemical hazard 
okay so what happened when it is exposed to our body whether it is respiratory or anything else okay so all kind of what information should be there so you must use that ppe kit okay for the best protect and uh, the handles one so these kind of what information should be with us now before dealing with the any gun okay you so must first of all mercury you know that mercury is an uh, one can call as a quick silver is also called as a mercury so mercury was the name of roman's messenger of the god who were believed to really fast moving based on that the name is called as a mercury so it is heavy metal and bright silvery in the appearance it is a heavy metal bright silvery appearance uh, it a liquid form uh, it is non poisonous as swallowed if swallowed uh, if it is volatile at room temperature and inhalation vapors is toxic now okay that's very dangerous now it gets widely distributed throughout the body and causes the toxic damage of brain kidney peripheral nervous system mucous membrane etc etc okay so this must be the vapors are very dangerous now so whenever the mercury lamps are there okay when it is uh, it is broken when it is broke so must uh, avoid the contact with that fumes now mercury lamp so very dangerous now so mercury awareness and safety now so it is called as a quick silver uh, it is the only metal uh, that is present in the liquid form at the room temperature and uh, other metals which are present some in condition example bromine etc so this is the symbol of what mercury here the atomic number is 80 the liquid form is there and some uh, it is used in various devices now example to measure the temperature and etc okay and uh, this this is the form that is called the amalgam we will discuss that so mercury occur, uh, occurs has uh, in cinnabar cinnabar nothing but the mercury sulfide hgs is also called as a cinnabar uh, cinnabar is highly toxic by ingestion or by dust inhalation now hgs is very toxic now elemental mercury can be produced by heating mercury containing ores uh, and condensing the vapor now so you can obtain that pure mercury by just uh, by by just heating that ore now you know ore ore is basically natural form okay so let's say example hgs hgs is an ore from which we get the hg okay and the liberation of sulfur and etc let's say example just example so uh, you know that the symbol is hg and uh, in the organic form methyl mercury and phenyl mercury is are there okay so inorganic compounds are mercury chloride you uh, see you know that in the calomel electrode it is used then mercury uh, chloride and mercurous chloride okay these are the some inorganic compounds which in which mercury is present and these are the two organic compound in which mercury is present next to that uh, what is that in compatibilities now so what happen uh, if the reaction is vigorous when it is sodium carbide aluminum etc etc these are the some additional information uh, you must uh, know about when you are high handling with this uh, mercury what are the uses of mercury now so basically mercury used in uh, in the ancient era or in the historic background if you see uh, the mercury uh, is used in various purposes now but now a mercury is a poisonous now means uh, whenever this Uh, when while handling with that chemical now various incidents are happen and from that uh, this mercury is a poisonous metal now okay heavy metals after the enzymatic and protein action can lead to the death now. the properties in that specific gravity is 13.6 times heavier than water now that's why it is much more denser okay uh historic uses uh, used for various purpose example uh, treat to depression uh, the tooth ac then laxative the teething powder fishing laurels then uh, fishing lures lighting house fire detector power plant fossil and uh, the nuclear system separating chlorine and sodium brine thermometers okay these are the some historic uses now uh, from which the mercury is are there now. okay uh, so here some the pictures that showing the uses of then the use of uh, the mercury in the compact fluorescent lamp that's called the cfl okay where the mention as a mercury okay uh to generate the more light less power consumption and more light will be generated now okay and last longer uh, than conventional bulb that's a mercury cfl bulbs we can call as a cfl bulb but the ingestion of mercury via the broken up glass is may occur okay where and uh, it will causes the various diseases also the mercury form 
most toxic form of mercury that's called the methyl mercury i has already told you that okay okay this is the mercury which is exist in the liquid form amalgam is nothing but a combination with the uh, example gold example zinc and other metals now okay uh, the root of what exposure or the inhalation primary root of uh, for elemental mercury basically uh 75 percent to 85 percent is absorbed by lungs now because when it is in the vapor form it through the respiratory systems is go uh, is absorbed by the lungs now and generally heavy uh, vapors are heavier than uh, the air so uh, the ratio is 6 to 9 6.9 but density okay and uh, the second one is a skin or eye contact now when it is absorbed through skin also okay the second one is a first one is absorbed by lung through the respiration and the second one is a eye contact or the skin which is through absorbed um, slowly through the skin uh, which causes the irritation uh, eye and uh, possibly contact the dermatitis even the, the the whitening and the rashes on the skin that's called the dermatitis the methyl mercury is completely absorbed and uh, not readily eliminated so it's very because any heavy metal it's very difficult to excrete it from a body now because it is a bio accumulated as already told in the introduction now. okay and look at this this is the dermatitis now and that is happened when uh, this mercury uh, vapors or mercury is when in contact with the skin now the skin get absorbed and that mercury and irritation start okay what are the health effects now so uh, inhalation of vapor that include the pulmonary diseases now okay you know the pulmonary etc and uh, mercury can cross the blood it affect to brain the very uh, delicate organ of a body and uh, and also risk to what the uh, children also so why are the inhalation so this is the process how this uh, metabolism is there now this is picture is from alsner and uh, asner in 1980 unborn children can be exposed to mercury through their mother's blood now and infants can be exposed through the breast milk so acute health health effect means uh, simple when it immediately contact with the mercury now so cough sore throat uh, etc diarrhea a headache but chronic are very dangerous now that means failure of kidney nervous system and muscles so mercury poisoning uh, mercury poisoning may results uh, from the mercury chloride or methyl mercury which is soluble okay inhalation as again as already told you that so you know that we eat that fish or selfish that which contaminated with the methyl mercury now so that that was the incident happened in the japan that's called the minamata disease the symptoms of what mercury poisoning sir again again same vomiting is there uh, the problem in the speaking then visual field then it occurs to blindness so here i mentioned that minamata disease now in 1950s thousands have suffered from acute mercury poisoning via the contaminated fish so there is a disposal from industry through that particular water leak and in that water leak there are various fish are there so that disposal is in uh, accumulated in that fish body and then fish the fisherman will took that fish and he came to the market and he uh, he basically what the uh, people are the peoples from market will take that fish and uh, they eat that fish now and they suffered the acute mercury poisoning okay so in 1953 now thousand people have suffered okay because of the industrial waste was discharged into the minamata bay that's why it's called the minamata disease and that contain the methyl mercury salt it's very dangerous now. and that's why the famous disease there that's called minamata disease now, which causes the death which causes the blindness also now this is now we'll deal with the what what we should do when we dealing with the uh, mercury so mercury is toxic you know that in the vapor form also in the liquid form also if it is if it is an uh, toxic one then why we are dealing with that now whenever it is a need now then use that gloves use that foot protection okay use that foot protection uh, then you can also use the pp now okay uh, whenever it is a decompan and uh, decontaminate uh, for firstly uh, dispose your cloths which con contact with the liquid mercury and uh, the chemical substitute you must find some chemical substitute now so here the new merc is a substitute for uh, the mercury now which is non toxic 
uh, which is uh, non uh, one can say which is non toxic and electrically conductive liquid and which is an alternative for that mercury now so this is an emergency planning uh, so you must prepare for that now, whenever while handling with that this is about the mercury now we'll deal with the next element that is called as a lead which is also the one of the toxic and heavy metals now so uh, as shown in the picture now so the galena this is nothing but the pbs which is a ore from which the lead is extracted now the soft blue gray metal which is found in the natural environment uh, uh, which is mostly present in the paint uh, gasoline in the past and still it is a product of a you know that there are some pictures are there now this is used in the petrol that's called the sisha rahit sisa rahit petrol uh, this is this is in the paint okay and how the people are exposed to lead now so uh, by dust by paint or by soil now the contaminated food is also responsible for the exposure then water and alcohol also some imported home remedies and cosmetics uh, you must know the some cosmetics are lead contain lead so don't use that type of the cosmetic in which lead is there now. okay then endogenous exposure okay so maybe due to the sun effect so that is the Okay, the, the, the basically this is the incomplete side in which uh, various diseases are known. Let's say example Minamata is one of the famous disease due to what the mercury. Similarly, you just just find the disease due to the lead, disease due to the thallium, disease due to the chromium, disease due to the cadmium, and disease due to what the arsenic. You must find some diseases which have occurred due to uh, this metals now. Now what is the uh, risk now? Which is the most uh, affected now? Okay, the childrens and older housing, which the children which living in older house, okay, in which uh, the lead is there, pregnant woman and uh, the developing fetus, okay, that affect the neurological effects. Now. Low exposure means lowered IQ, attention deficit, and impaired hearing, okay, and high exposure which uh, leads to coma, which leads to death, okay, etc. I am showing that slide, uh, that slide uh, having effects lead poisoning renal effects means related to the kidney uh, hematological effect means related with the uh, hemoglobin uh, the retardation or interfere the production of hemoglobin even the hemoglobin is very important endocrine effect which affects the thyroid function uh, cardiovascular effect that is increasing the risk of heart problem development uh, developmental effects basically in the fetal development and neurological effect means lowered iq irritability and convulsions Okay, these are the most poisoning, uh, the most important effects due to what the lead poisoning. Next to that, what are the arsenic now? What is what is arsenic? Arsenic is an element which is occurred naturally, uh, as shown in the picture. Uh, it combined with the other metals and chemicals to make uh, the ore. Okay, and associated with the mining of other metals, example uh, the copper, silver, and gold. Arsenic is basically all around us now. It cannot be destroyed because it is heavy metal. It cannot be destroyed. It has a toxic effect at high or as well as low exposure. Okay, arsenic is categorized as the human carcinogen. That is a car cancer causing. Okay, remember this point. Cancer causing element that is called as arsenic. Now exposure to arsenic may affect the children lifetime toxic effect. Then you must deal. With that arsenic, now. you must aware about that arsenic. How arsenic is very dangerous to us. Now. Okay, that's why arsenic containing products can't don't buy as well as can't be used now. Okay, so there are many forms of what arsenics are there. So I just classified the inorganic arsenic and organic arsenic. Inorganic arsenic does not uh, contain the carbon, but may contain the element as oxygen, chlorine, and sulfur. Okay, and which is a poisonous and toxic also. Okay, here organic arsenic contain carbon and, and as well as hydrogen, which is non-poisonous but less toxic. Okay, uh, than what the inorganic. One. So here, what is inorganic arsenic now, which is present generally on the surface as well as on the groundwater, uh, found in the mining and industrial. Here, look at this mining and industrial waste now, uh, which is also natural occurring from the uh, rock as well as on the soil. It is used as a wood preservative. Hey, wood preservative okay and uh, uh, the leukemia treatment also okay 
organic arsen uh, arsenic are found in the bacteria fungi and some plants which converts organic uh, inorganic arsenic to the organic arsenic so varying amount of are found in the organism example animals plant and seafood i will show the picture also it is used in the pesticide insecticide okay and the poultry feed remember this one poultry we are we are we are now eating lot of chicken and that uh, that particular uh, poultry are feeded by arsenic containing product and arsenic is very poisonous okay so be careful about that okay so uh, here these are the some images where organic arsenic is present okay so be aware about that arsenic now okay arsenic poisoning effect at uh, high uh, acute uh, one can say dose exposure now so first of all tired then stomach pain how doctor suggest okay what suggestion is there when arsenic poisoning is there now when at high level okay dryness in the throat omit okay diarrhea difficult in the urination convulsion okay convulsions okay the that's the uh, and the delirium the death also what are the uses of the arsenic now arsenic is uh, used as you know that wood protection is the ars ancient time it is act as a pigment uh, it is used for the medicine okay uh, then tanning that is leather, leather particularly skin whitener but in currently Uh, it is used as a wood preservative insecticide defoliant okay uh, then semiconductor example gallium uh, gallium arsenide medicine okay uh, for the treatment of what leukemia and this is a wood this is called a wood preservative so these are the current uses of what arsenic now the source sources of arsenic exposure so how this uh, arsenic is exposed inhalation water food again these are the three important source okay air food water and widely separated in the environment example industry mineral ores and the pesticide agri agriculture these are the some sources where arsenic is exposed then uh, how much is too much arsenic now so uh, a small amount of arsenic also causes the health effects now okay so skin cancer Uh, then elevated blood pressure the diabetes uh, the next one lungs and heart development it affect to that it, it affect to bladder it affect to kidney and the liver cancer so that's why we must aware about whenever we are handling that particular chemicals or the elements you should aware about that uh, their role their toxicity in oxygen okay so arsenic toxicity is very important uh, that means you should aware about that how your body is affected so single dose which is cleared in 1 to 3 days mainly via the urine uh, but uh, accumulate in the bones hair nails organs etc okay so and how can you reduce that exposure so there are some methods are there example you uh, in you know that in covid time we all are uh, using this method that's washing hands okay regularly frequently you can wash your hands now you can also treat with the technologies example adsorption media and reverse osmosis you can do when we are exposed uh, the clean technique wet sweeping and uh, or the dusting these are the some methods where uh, one can say the we can reduce the exposure now okay and cleaning is most important okay so uh, we'll back to our point so toxic substances are generally uh, common uh, everywhere in the environment in the lab especially in the lab consumer products example cosmetics etc okay uh, so that's why you must know about the msd data okay and then we'll work on it okay so very important which is available on the website which also available on that uh, the box of that particular chemicals okay so and your own awareness is very important very important okay and you must know about how to defense it okay and educate yourself and also educate to what other people now so uh, these are uh, the list of uh, the heavy metals mercury arsenic cadmium lead thallium and chromium uh, how they are affected how the exposure acute exposure chronic exposure their concentration and how to treat okay these are the table now. so i am showing some pictures the safety is a part of our science so safe work while doing the practices now 
so be aware of your surrounding when you enter into the lab so you must know about all type of the symbols when all types of our symbols should be known to us okay fire alarm then everything is there know the potential hazards and appropriate safety precautions before beginning the work now okay and you must know about all the symbols which are given uh, here on this slide okay so what basically the hazards are there okay what happen when your exposure is there now so what should do now what do i need to do the uh, to be prepared and etc okay uh, then again again some uh, pictures i will, uh, i will show you the some pictures to you so that that might be very helpful while doing this practical and uh, doing this uh, lab session this is very important while uh, why we need to wear that proper pp when working in the lab now so includes gloves shoes apron okay eye glass okay hand gloves etc then mask this is called the pp okay so doctor suggested even Uh, chemist is suggested that you must wear this one eye protection you only have one pair of eyes so protect that okay so they asked to the people where do that, that's called the blind people so how the impo- eye is important so you have only one eye pair okay so you must protect using that gloves and etc while enter into the lab not at all places gloves is very important now so consult with the sds what type of the gloves should be there in clothing so what type of the cloth is there now so here this type of cloth cannot be used okay so you must when chemical exposure occurs so what we have to do now immediately we have to do some methods now i wash is there and we have to wash the hand now particularly you can take bath okay your uh, whatever clothings are there which affect you must expose dispose to them and okay? consent with the medicine waste disposal after that uh, hazard is there now so biohazard you can must dispose that particular chemicals now here last one you all faculty laboratory staff and student uh, are encouraged to give the recommendation to improve the safety and the health condition so thank you so much for uh, watching this and listening here so i am patient so i am uh, zamir sheik i am lastly thankful to you Okay, this is the picture that showing the whole periodic table, and uh, you can create such kind of what animations. You can create such kind of what the environment so other people can take part in our subject now. So my uh, uh, my suggestion is also there. Whenever you need any kind of what uh, uh, data or any kind of what information, so you can also uh, visit to our. Uh, um, site okay on youtube also so i am lastly i thanks to my college uh, who giving uh, this opportunity to deliver that particular talk so special thanks to our society shri shivaji education society amravati the founder president dr punjab rao deshmukh and this is my college thank you so much stay connected and stay safe okay so thank you